Do you want to learn how to predict football matches using possession stats on Excel? If so, watch this video and subscribe to become a lad. Alright, first lads, you have to have your data already loaded in. Here I've imported 2021 EPL season data directly from the website Football Reference. And the columns I have here are from the left to right. Position, squad, matches played, wins, draws, losses, goals for, goals against, goal difference, points and possession. Really though, the only columns we need for this basic possession model is the possession column, goals against, goals for and the teams in the competition. So now we set up two columns next to the data named ATT rating or attack rating and then next to it DEF rating which would be a team's defence rating. So a team's attacking ratio or rating is the ratio of its goals scored to the competition average for goals scored. So we can work this out by dividing a team's goals for by the competition average for goals for. So find the competition average for goals for and goals against. They'll be the same by using the average formula. And then uh, just simply divide a team's uh, goals for by the league average and absolute reference to league average so that when we autofill this across and down it stays consistent so here Manchester City's attack rating is 1.84 meaning they're 1.84 uh, times better than the league average team in their attack all right so now we'll do something that'll come in handy later in the video and find the league average goals scored per game so to do this simply divide the sum of goals scored by the sum of the matches played so use the sum formula sum and the sum of goals for and then divide it by the sum of matches played and this will give you uh, the average amount of goals scored by a team in each game and in this season it was 1.4 goals. Next lads will use linear regression to model the relationship between the team's possession and their attack and defence rating. To do this you need data analysis enabled on your Excel found in the data tab and this isn't something I'm covering how to enable in this video, but you can easily find out how to do it on YouTube or the internet. So click on data analysis, which is obviously in the data tab, and then uh, select regression out of the following analysis tools. Once you've selected regression, hit OK. So now a regression tab will pop up, and first we'll fill in the Y range with the dependent value in our data set. Here it'll be the ATT or attack rating of each team because our model assumes that a team's level of possession will determine their attacking strength. Therefore our X range will be the possession values at, as it is the independent variable. Then select the labels checkbox as we've included already the possession and ATT rating headers in our X and Y data. I also want to output the regression table in a new worksheet. So uh, make sure the new worksheet button, so it should say new worksheet ply selected, and I want to name this worksheet ATT correlation. And then in the residuals box, select residuals and line fit plots boxes. Once you've done that, hit OK, and the new sheet ATT correlation will come up. So I'll go ahead and expand this possession line fit plot and also run through and highlight some of the important pieces of data in this worksheet. So over here is the R squared value and from this we can interpret that 71% or 0.71 of the variability in the ATT ratings which was our dependent variable can be explained by the model which is a surprisingly good figure for a basic model. Uh, next in the ANOVA table is the significance F as long as uh, this is below 0.05 it's fine so highlight that. Here now we have the possession coefficient and this figure basically tells us for every increase of one in a team's possession, say from 50% to 51%, uh, this will increase their attacking rating by 0.0396. Below we have the residual output which measures, measures the variance of our model's predicted value from the actual amount. So in this model team one is expected to have an ATT rating of 1.70 based on the, their possession but actually it's 1.84 and so the residual is 0 0.1397 um, because that's the difference between the actual and the predicted value. Next the p-values of the intercept and uh, our possession are both below 0 0.05 so again this model is acceptable. So now that we've done all that for the ATT correlation, we have to do the same thing in order to find the defending correlation. So go ahead and select data analysis and regression again, but this time we have to highlight the defending rating as our Y value instead of the attacking rating. 
keep the input X range the same because we're still basing it off a team's possession values. Change the name of our new worksheet to DEF correlation and then once you press OK we have a new sheet. So let's highlight and double check the important values again. That's our new line bit plot. Our R squared over here is 0.54 so slightly less than our attacking correlation meaning the model is slightly less uh, correct in predicting a team's defending strength based on purely possession numbers. Our significance F and P values are also both under 0.05 so again that's acceptable. Now to make this more visually appealing for us we can actually insert a line of best fit. So to do this click on the chart and then select chart design. From here going to add chart element and then in the drop down select trend line and then linear. Make sure you select the trend line based on the defending rating not the predicted rating. Now when the trend line appears, click on it and a format trend line tab will pop up on the right hand side of your screen. Go down to the bottom of this window and go ahead and select display equation chart as well as display R squared value on chart, which is right here. This will then come up on our chart as a linear equation. We can also bolden this line by increasing its width, which is over here. And then if you want, you can do the same thing for the attacking correlation. So it looks pretty good right now and has our R squared and Y equals negative 0.2X plus our intercept. So again, chart design, add chart element. Make sure you do linear. You can do uh, other chart options such as exponential and this may increase the R, R squared value and make it a tiny bit more accurate. But for this, we're just going to stick with the linear equation. Alright lads, to find a team's expected goals within a matchup, we first need to set up the equation we extracted using linear regression. So in columns to the right of our raw data, enter the headers ATT correlation and DEF correlation. So just separate them with um, one column, in our case column Q. From here we'll copy and paste the coefficients from uh, the respective worksheets. So from the attacking correlation worksheet, just copy those cells, go into our EPL data worksheet and just press control V. And so from each worksheet we should get um, an intercept and possession coefficients and they should obviously be different. Great. Uh, Next, we need to allow the user, which is us, to select two teams to face in a hypothetical matchup. So for this video, I'll make a drop-down list by first naming the range of our teams. So highlight your range, and I'll name this teams. Hit enter. Go back to the cells, and I'll format them so that they stand out. And when I enter teams later, it will be really easy to find. So after you format these cells, go into the data tab and press this icon here, which is called data validation. Then a data validation window will pop up. Under allow, select list. And then for our source for the list, simply type in equals teams, which is our range. Hit OK. And then these two cells will now allow you to select the team from the list we have in our raw data. So all the Premier League teams, I'll select Chelsea and Leicester City. Okay, so next to these cells, we need to grab the, that specific team, which we chose in our uh, drop-down list. Uh, we need to grab their possession stat using an XLOOKUP function. So uh, with our XLOOKUP function, first put um, a header named possession. It's just equal XLOOKUP. First, we need a lookup value. That'll simply be our team. Lookup array. Uh, the array in which we'll find that will be teams and then the array we want to re return is the uh, possession of that team. So absolute references um, so it can't move. Close bracket and you can also absolute uh, reference the column for P7 but it's not totally necessary for what we're doing here. And you can see Chelsea's possession is 61.8, which is what we've got here. If we change it, Liverpool's possession is 62.7, therefore this formula is right. Auto-fill this in, and it's correct again because we uh, correctly absolute referenced it. And um, now after this, we have to create a new table down below with the headers team, 
attack or ATT, uh, defense or DEF, and XG, meaning expected goals. So I'll make this team column bold. Under team, you can just copy and paste the values above. So equals P7 to P8, Liverpool and Leicester City. And now for a team's attack rating, it's the ATT intercept, which is up here. And these are the values we copy and pasted. Plus the product of the team's possession multiplied by the possession coefficient. So close the bracket there and press enter. So Liverpool's assumed attacking strength uh, based on their possession numbers is 1.5 or 1.5 uh, times better than the league average. Do the same thing for Leicester City, the ATT or attack intercept plus their possession times the possession coefficient and that'll reach their attack rating. Do the same thing for defence, it's just the defence correlation intercept plus the product of that specific team, Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool's possession multiplied by the possession or the defending uh, correlation possession coefficient. And then now to calculate the expected goals for each team, we only have to multiply that team's attack ra uh, rating um, by the opposing team's defence rating and then times uh, the average goals. So Liverpool's expected goals is 1.99, do the same thing, Leicester City's attack uh, rating times Liverpool's defence rating, times again by the average goals. And so we've got Leicester City's expected goals now. We can um, simplify that to two decimal places. Now we have to run simulations to work out the win, draw and loss probability for each team. So create a new worksheet and name it simulations. And in cell B1, uh, use the transpose function to paste the two teams in our match horizontally. So just highlight Liverpool and Leicester City here. And it'll translate that from a vertical list to a horizontal one. Next, I'm going to use the binomial inverse function to simulate the goal scored by team. So binom.inv trials will put 10,000. And the probability for our trial will be our expected goals. But it is really important that you absolute reference this and then divide it by the amount of trials we've done, so 10,000. Next, we've got the alpha, and I want to use a random function. So put R-A-N-D and then open and close bracket. Finish the formula, and when we uh, backspace or refresh the cells, our simulated score line will change each, each time for Liverpool. If we do the same thing for Leicester City, 10,000 trials. Expected goals is our probability S. Make sure you divide that by the amount of trials and then our alpha is again the RAND function. And there we have our first simulated match. So each time we refresh, there's a different score line um, and it refreshes every time. So now we have to put the header trials in cell A2. And then under this, I'm going to use the sequence function to spill a list of 10,000, which will represent 10,000 games. So type in equals sequence and this is a spill function so rows 10,000 open and close bracket and then it spills 10,000 um, columns this represents the amount of games we're simulating that is 10,000 so uh, now highlight this whole range and the shortcut to do this is the control shift arrows so click on trials control shift arrow right control shift arrow down Go into the data tab and then select what if analysis then data table so what if analysis data table is the third row here leave the row input cell but for the column input cell um, enter a random cell not being used and that's away from the main data set press ok and your simulations should appear if you scroll down they're all different and each time you press backspace, they should update. If you're simulating a larger amount of games, say 100,000 or a million, and it'll take more time to load, but because we're only doing 10,000, it's easier. So now we'll make a new column called the result column. And for this, we're going to use an ifs function. So Excel recognizes what to spit out, whether the home team got a win. So if Liverpool, um, or the home team, or the first team rather, have more goals than the other team, it's a win. If they have 
an equal amount of goals, it's a draw. If they have less, it's a loss. So make sure you put these in um, speech commas. And if you autofill that down, you see it works and refreshes every time we update the cells. A 2-2 two, two scoreline is a draw. A 1-2 scoreline is a loss for the first team. And so now we can um, create our final output. So merge and center these cells and then type in match outcome in this cell because here we're going to be using our simulation results to compile the win, loss and draw probability for each team using our possession model. Over in this column we'll set up our match outcomes using concatenation so equals team one and and then in commas space and then win that'll make whatever that team is in that cell um, plus win the text win and do the same thing for this cell so Leicester City win should come up and now we have to merge and center these cells over here so this first one and two below it um, to create three individual cells to the right of these outcomes Liverpool win or team one win draw and then team two win or in our case Leicester City win so in our first cell we use a county function to record the amount of wins team one has achieved in the simulation um, using the county function um, and obviously dividing this by the number of trials so equals our range in this range we're finding the text win so put it in uh, speech marks so this occurs 6139 times and then to get our win percentage chance, divide this by the amount of trials, which is 10,000. And then so when we press enter, we see that Liverpool win 0.6046 um, times out of one, or 60.46% um, of the time. So let's do the same thing for draw. Out of this range, and um, to highlight the whole range, um, on Mac use the shortcut Control shift um, up or down arrow and this will highlight the whole range um, find the amount of times draw appears and then divide it by uh, the total amount of simulations in the range which is 10,000 do the same thing this time in speech marks loss and it's critical you do this in speech marks because if you just type in loss it'll result in error divided by 10,000 again and now we've got our probabilities and at the bottom of the screen it adds up to one convert this to a percentage and then now we can use a color scale um, to make it more visually appealing so green's good and red's not so good and so when we press backspace this data update because it's a simulation it's not a set percentage and so the amount of times Liverpool win in 10,000 simulations will change if we change it to Chelsea the probability changes change it to a weaker team, say Newcastle United, um, and it drastically changes, which proves to you that uh, the model does work. Switch it again, Arsenal, and it updates.